don't say where it was to be staged, I apologize. I'm in Crew Hubble Bay. Um, I'm in charge of uh, all the Coast Guard surface assets, which means if it has a racing stripe and it floats, it's my problem. Um, one of the things I also uh, do is I'm in charge of our command center, which is our communications center, as well as our operations center, which does all the search and rescue planning, all of the communications for the Coast Guard in the area. Um, before I get started, um, how many of you, uh, my understanding is it's just DSC that we're talking about for the most part? Okay. How many of you are familiar at all with DSC? By show hands. Okay. <laughs> okay. DSC, Digital Selective Call. It's part of a program that I know you're familiar with, which is SOLAS, which is the Safety of Life at Sea, as well as the International Telecommunications Union. Uh, the ITU um, mandated that the entire world go to this digital selective calling system throughout the whole world as the, the standard. Digital selective calling is prevalent and extremely uh, highly used throughout Europe and Asia. It's used everywhere in the world except for here in the United States. Part of the reason it's not used here in the United States prevalently is because the Coast Guard was a little slow in getting our equipment installed so that we have DSC. Without us having DSC, it really doesn't serve you, the American people, very well. We are remedying that. Um, we are in the process right now of upgrading our communication system to something we call Rescue 21, which is a massive upgrade to what we currently have. Our current system is based off of 1940s and 1950s technology. We are upgrading to finally come into the 2000 <laughs> generation, and we're getting this system. The system will actually be allow us to do a number of different things, including DSC, um, but it will also allow us to do radio direction finding and, in theory, take the search out of search and rescue. Um, it will triangulate positions on the ocean using those radio signals for us. Now, just kind of, I. I didn't know that we were going to have so many guests, and I apologize. I didn't make enough copies. I apologize. Um, but I've printed out some stuff from the U.S. Coast Guard's Navigation Center. We need one. Okay. Um, the Navigation Center for the Coast Guard is the primary um, primary repository for the DSC information, and I put a link to their website on the top of the ground here. Okay. Um, that is taken directly off their web page. That is quoted. I mean, I cut and paste. I still I don't like reinventing the wheel. Um, DSC. Uh, it there's a couple of different kinds of DSC. The most common one that you're probably familiar with is the VHF version, the very high frequency, the Marine Band Channel 16 stuff. There's other frequency bands that we also have DSC on. Medium frequency, which is your single sideband upper sideband frequencies. <coughs> um, and you can have DSC, if you have an HF radio on board your boat, you can hook up a DSC transceiver to it as well. What DSC does, in simple terms, it is an emergency system that hooks up your VHF radio or HF MF radio to your GPS. And what that does is there's a button, usually every one that I've ever seen, has one button on it that's usually kind of hidden under a little switch or something that says emergency or distress, something like that. If you press that button and hold it in, what it does is it transmits a data signal, digital data signal, over channel 70. And if you ever try to dial up channel 70, please don't transmit on channel 70. That's why it's there uh, just for DSC. What it does is it transmits that sig signal out and that digital information includes what's called an MMSI, which is Mobile Maritime Station Identification Number. Sorry, I had to think about it. Um, the MMSI is specific to the radio itself, which means there cannot be two MMSIs that are exactly the same. That means it's a unique identifier. I can pull up an MMSI for any radio and figure out who owns it. It's a great, great identification system. It's similar to the 406 registered EPIRBs in that you can't fake it. I mean, it, you can't put somebody else's name on it. It's not Bob's 406. That's my 406. Same thing with the MMSIs. Um, 
Once it sends out that signal with the MMSI, all it sends is your MMSI and your position. That's all it sends. They may send other extraneous stuff that just tells us that it's coming from a mobile, mobile unit. Mobile meaning it's not land-based. And that mobile identification, and I'm sorry, I'm a graphic guy. I don't think well unless I got pictures to draw from. So this is my poor drawing. But here on the coast, if we've got a transceiver right there for a Coast Guard uh, radio. This boat hits its distress button on the DSC. It will transmit that signal directly to us and it will pop up saying that we have a vessel in distress, here's its MMSI, and here's its latitude and longitude, down to the thousandth of a minute, uh, thousandth of a minute of a degree. Needless to say, as a search and rescue guy, the fact that I have thousandth of a minute to find somebody is extremely useful. Um, taking the search out of search and rescue. Uh, the last thing I want is to be busy. I know that sounds pretty funny, but uh, I want to be the laziest government employee ever. I don't want to do search and rescue. I want everybody to be safe. If I have to rescue somebody, this is the way I want to do it. I don't want to have to search for them. The longer, as you all know, that you're out there and you're in distress, your odds of survival go down significantly, especially if you go into the drink. Um, the, one of the other little features of this DSC, like I said, when it transmits your MMSI, it transmits saying, I'm a mobile unit, here's my position. Now, if I'm this boat out here that's 150 miles offshore, <coughs> is your VHF radio going to reach 150 miles? No. Not unless there's some crazy atmospherics going on. I have had it happen, but it is very strange. Um, odds are you're not going to be able to. We're not going to be able to receive your signal directly. What DSC does is, if this boat transmits its signal out saying I'm in distress, it's going out in that big arc, 20, 30 miles, depending on antenna height, power, all those other things. What happens is when that signal gets sent out, that radio is waiting for an acknowledgement from a land-based station saying, I have received your signal. Until it receives that, that radio will keep broadcasting, I'm in distress, here's my MMSI, here's my position. It keeps broadcasting it until it gets an acknowledgement from a land-based unit. So when this thing gets sent out, if he's offshore too far, we're not going to hear him. However, if this boat here is with, within range, what it will do is if he has, everybody has a DSC radio, I'm assuming, that's what I'm going to assume at this point. If he has a DSC radio, this boat transmits it to him, he hears it, his radio hears it, not him personally. The radio will pick it up and say, I have heard a mobile station that is in distress. I have not received an acknowledgement from a land-based unit that they have received the signal. So what this boat's radio will automatically do unknown to the operator, it will send that signal back out. It will keep skipping from boat to boat, ship to ship, for as long as it takes for a land-based unit to hit acknowledge. And then the signal goes back out the same way. Mm -hmm. Now, you can see pretty quickly is a pretty nice little system. It's got redundancy to it as far as as long as there's a line of boats Point A, point F. As long as there's a line of boats that all have DSC, it will keep transmitting that signal back and forth, up and down the chain. So you, as mariners, having a DSC radio, you're looking out for your fellow mariners without you even knowing it. It's really, really that simple. There's a lot of technology behind it I won't bore you with because I don't understand it at all. I'm an operator. I'm not a technician.